Today we begin with Rwanda, a country in a region ravaged by war, by, but ranked as the sixth safest in the world for solo travelers and consistently rated top for safety in Africa by the Gallup Global Law and Order Report with 83% of its residents expressing confidence in the local police force. Beyond this, Rwanda has become an economic powerhouse, applauded as a success with fantastic rates of growth. It's no coincidence that the first made in Africa smartphone comes from Rwanda, and the German car maker Volkswagen makes its cars for the African market there. In the World Bank's Doing Business report, which describes how economically friendly countries are, Rwanda ranks 29th out of 190 and is the second best African nation on that list after Mauritius. It's got the best and cheapest internet infrastructure and most government services are online, making it easy, for example, to set up a company on a smartphone. Rwanda is also associated with environmental protection measures and with equality for women. About 60% of the country's lawmakers are women. Well, for more on all that, I'm suitably delighted to say that the Rwandan High Commissioner to Nigeria, Ambassador Stanislas Kamanzi, joins me now in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you for having me. How do you feel when you hear all those nice things being said about your country? Well, it's... Um it's good, it's good to hear, but also challenging. Uh, as um, all the strides made uh, require continuity, sustainability. Uh, but it's a sentiment shared among Rwandans that uh, if we came from where we were, uh, uh, from very low to where we are now, uh, it's a, it's a a necessitation for us to move even further. Right. So that, that that's uh, you know glad to hear that uh, some good progress uh, has been made, but uh, it's also a challenge for us to be sure that uh, we keep it up. Mm. You we sustain it, we basically. Sustain it, yeah, exactly. So, so would you say that Rwanda is still haunted by the ghosts of the genocide, or, or is is it past that now and more focused on? economic growth and development. Well, let me put it right. We're not wanted by the ghosts of genocide, the ghosts of, genoc of the genocide against the Tutsi, but we do remember. We do remember what happened. We do remember its wrongs, but at the same time, we are on the, uh, the path of renewal, mm. uh, sustained by our unity. That's essential. Uh, and then this, connect with what you have just you, you, what you have just said uh, lessons from that uh, uh, tragic past uh, led us to build up uh, what we value much and this is uh, our unity as a nation mm. because and then a nation that needs to uh, to be uh, to be to, to exist in a dignified way and that dignified way can be made up of uh, you know, better livelihoods for each and every mm. one. Yeah. Well, that's an important point because uh, your president, Paul Kagame, has been credited with trying to unite what was clearly a very divided country and make it more prosperous mm -hmm. after that, as you said, tragic 1994 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. genocide. Mm -hmm. To what extent has he succeeded in doing that? Oh, pretty well. We actually, Rwanda was blessed to have a, a leader like him who first of all believed in that unity, uh, that, 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 that's uh, you know, very critical. Uh, from uh, the onset, uh, in the phase of uh, rebuilding, reconciling, uh, he has been uh, the engine of that unity we're talking about. Bring everyone together, uh, getting everyone to, uh, to, to develop a sense of responsibility, and then uh, gradually, uh, also crafting some uh, uh, some uh, some ways of uh, uh, giving justice to those who had been affected the most, but with a tone of reconciliation, and then gradually Rwanda became what it ought to be. Mm. 
his admirers, obviously you're one of them, think very highly of mm. him, mm. but his critics are very skeptical. Mm. In other words, he divides opinion. Why do you think that he excites that kind of passion? Well, because he's a big man. Big man <laughs> in terms of... Uh, uh, well, he is a tall man, that's he, for sure. He, he's tall, but beyond that, him being tall, uh, he's really uh, you know, uh, an insightful person. Mm. A very inspired person, a very visionary person. That's uh, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the you know, the, 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 the first, uh, you know, the most important characteristic uh, of him. Now, uh, there being people uh, or quotas that um, uh, are skeptical mm. as to whom he is. The good news is that they are, you know, they are minority, but let's. Let's give them uh, uh, some level of uh, acknowledgement. Uh, this comes from our history. Uh, he's a man who has been challenging everyone, mm. the international community, uh, for what happened in Rwanda and that might happen or might have happened everywhere, which didn't have to happen. And yes, no, absolutely. Watch. You understand? Well, well, I mean, clearly nobody mm. doubts that, yes. that Mr. Kagame mm. has brought great success yes. to Rwanda. I mm. mean, if you look at the economic indicators that we're talking about, there are more children in school. Mm. Rwanda is tackling disease head on, the environment, etc. So then how do we go? Do, do you go... Uh, along criticizing a man like that? Yeah, but, yeah, but well, th let me make the point. <laughs> yes. that that's economic and environmental. Yes. Politically, mm -hmm. there are very strong criticisms of mm -hmm. him, aren't there? It all depends on uh, what we, we, we consider uh, politics uh, as, as, uh, you know, as, at, as, 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 as it should be, you understand? Um, well, let me give you an example. Yes, I mean, but let me let me let me let me let me also clarify, sure. clarify on that. Politics are, are meant to serve. You understand? Mm. It's not politics for politics. It's not politics for sitting on a, a on a on a you know Fence. in a position as a chair. Mm. Uh, sorry, as a, as a leader in a you know in a position as a leader, and then uh, just uh, be sure that you abide by established uh, norms that at times don't even at times don't even make sense mm. with your own context while uh, everything else is completely disregarded why you bring no solutions why you 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 you, 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 you you're not provoking any any transformations to happen so and so forth mm. and uh, on the other hand uh, being able to galvanize people to get them to understand what matters for them, mm. to get them to, to, to move as one uh, and go forward, and then uh, to, to, to create that transformation, to make it effective. No, no, but you see, you see um, mm. Ambassador, yes. High Commissioner, mm. nobody is doubting that. Mm. We already established okay. that he is a, an inspirational figure. Mm -hmm. He is a, a leader amongst leaders mm. in Africa. There's no question about sure. that. Mm. But the, other, the issue here mm. is the issue of politics and the mm. way he reacts to people mm. who are critical of mm -hmm. him. I mean, he seems very intolerant of criticism. Let's talk about somebody like Paul Rusa Sebagina, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. a hotel manager from mm -hmm. Rwanda, a man mm -hmm. whose life story was mm -hmm. turned into a movie, mm -hmm. a Hollywood hero, mm -hmm. but clearly not in the eyes of the Rwandan authorities. I mean, for them, he's a villain who they accuse of terrorism. But, do, do you but, concede that his trial and conviction have shown your government in a different, less favorable light from all the other nice things we've said? Yeah, but beyond that, mm. uh, do you, your, you know, whoever's contest, uh, the, the, the contest of questioning of the fact that Paul Sessavagin is a terrorist, is he grounded on evidence or is he grounded on, on, on just emotions? Because here we are and uh, it's all evidenced, it's documented about the gentleman mm. having come out to acknowledge that he was part of a terrorist group that was operating in uh, our area of Africa uh, and uh, that 
contributed to the killing of innocent people. You understand? Innocent people. Yeah, he didn't say he contributed to the killing. Of he innocent. didn't say so. This documented. Uh, challenge me, I would uh, be right. able to provide that. But it isn't the issue here, mm. Ambassador, so, that, that mm. he's one of Paul Kagame's fiercest critics, a political exile who simply wanted his country to change. To ch ha, ha, th th does change involve just killing innocent people? You understand? You, you, we are in Nigeria, for instance, here we have a number of political parties, mm. a ruling party and parties in the opposition. Do or would you, would you be comfortable with any party in the opposition start killing people to, you know, so that they advance into, you know, into taking power in the next election? Well, obviously not. No, it doesn't work that way. Mm. So nobody is uh, uh, prevented from acting, uh, acting uh, as, be, as, as befits on the poli political arena of, are, arena of Rwanda. But then, if you put at risk, uh, at risk uh, the lives of people and go out to say it shamelessly, justice will take care of you. And that, 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 that's what happened. I okay. don't know why people tend to ignore that and uh, just... Uh, well, we, we need clarification from people like you. That's why you're, you represent sure, the government. Sure, exactly, so yes. the, the clarification is important. Sure, Please stay sure. with us. We're going to come back and talk with you some more. You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with the Rwandan High Commissioner to Nigeria, Ambassador Stanislas Kamanzi. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyegolu. Now they call Rwanda the rising star of Africa, the new engine room for the continent's economy. The country is ranked by the World Bank as the second easiest place to do business in Africa, and its foreign direct investment stocks have increased dramatically in recent years. The UK, Portugal, India, the UAE, and Turkey are some of the biggest investors in Rwanda. They cite the country's business-friendly environment, strong institutions, and favorable conditions offered to investors, which make it an attractive destination for international business. And it's all thanks to President Paul Kagame, whose rebel forces drove out the killers in the genocide. Since then, he's been heralded for his leadership over a traumatized country and for reviving the economy. But recently, that reputation as a liberator and modernizer has become somewhat tarnished by allegations of a brutal silencing of his critics. And the Rwandan High Commissioner to Nigeria, Ambassador Stanislas Kamanzi, is still with me in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for uh, staying with us. Um, is Paul Kagame in power for a lifetime? Because, I mean, from a legal point of view, nothing stands in the way of him staying in power for many more years to come. He's already, I mean, this year makes it 22 years in office. Well, he stayed in office as long as uh, Rwandans will vote him in. And this dif di differs from him staying for a lifetime. You understand? So that's what p people should focus on. As long as he's voted in by Rwandans uh, uh, through in a good framework, why not him rule the country? Well, I mean, there are two things mm -hmm. here. I mean, people are not going to vote for you unless you say you're running again. I mean, do you think that after 22 years, maybe it's time for someone else to take over? And Is continue in the same vein. I mean, he's heralded as a great leader. He's currently assuming a term that, uh, oh, you know, uh, to it which expires he has in 2024. following elections. So let, let's right. not really uh, anticipate on his, uh, you know, he, he, he may run constitutionally now, he may run for another term, but let's not anticipate on that. Let's, let's focus on his current uh, office mm. and, uh, you know, discuss based on that. Okay, well, let's change direction slightly. Mm. How mm. has Rwanda been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic? I understand that quite a lot of businesses have been hit by yes, the virus. Uh, uh, we, yes, we can, uh, we can uh, see this from uh, a phase perspective. Mm. The first phase uh, hit us like uh, any other country. Uh, it was uh, like uh, dealing with the unknown. Everything was unknown, everything was challenging. But the good news is that uh, measures were put, put, put in place to ensure that uh, 
uh, rates of infection are controlled, mechanisms for, uh, for uh, keeping people safe are in place, mm. and then uh, we managed to survive uh, that phase with no major, uh, no, no, no major uh, impact especially countrywide. Mm. You know, I uh, would say that Chigari was aff affected the most, but the countryside was less affected. Right. And then as new waves came in, that coincided with uh, uh, the availability of uh, the first uh, vaccines. And then government uh, added it to the measure that were in place, uh, programs to facilitate access to, va to vaccine to as many people as possible currently. Uh, we, 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 we record, uh, you know, we count more than 80%, 80, 80, 80% of, our, of uh, the population of Rwanda who have had at least one jab. Now, that uh, is a remarkable exactly achievement. Uh, and That's a remarkable yeah. achievement, and I have to congratulate you on that. Thank because, you so I mean, the, the rest mm. of Africa mm. is just done about 10%. Mm. So to reach the, the figure of 80, more than 80%, that, that's quite remarkable. But let's talk about the economy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Rwanda is, as we mentioned at the, at the opening, the intro, it's touted as this country that's achieved so much. And not just, I mean, it's not, that's a fact. I mean, mm -hmm. it's done so much economically. Mm -hmm. it, it's right at the, the cutting edge of mm -hmm. economic growth mm -hmm. in Africa. Um, a lot of foreign direct investment coming in. Mm -hmm. but. Are the Rwandan people actually mm. building businesses themselves? I mean, how much of a stake do they have in this new economic miracle that is Rwanda? Because it seems that it's rich foreign countries and big business, international multinationals that are reaping the benefits. And from what I understand, local entrepreneurs have great difficulty in getting financing from banks for instance another wrong perception because uh if um, any um any uh innovative uh, uh uh innovative approach to to to, to, to national development uh is to be reckoned with it's the inclusion of nationals, yeah, but, but of Rwandans. But more than 70% of Rwandans, according to a World Bank estimate, are still living on less than $2 a day. Well, that's what I told you from, from, from the beginning. As much as we are progressing, we haven't gone where we wish, wish to go. Uh, we can debate this through the mm. different phases of uh, uh, developmental frameworks that we have crafted for ourselves. And... Uh, 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 I, would, I, I, I would want you to, to maybe to, 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 to bring up the, that aspect to do with the poverty reduction that the country has, uh, has experienced. Yes, that is true. It's been credited with exactly. enormous poverty reduction. Exactly. That's a fact. Yes. Now, uh, the, 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 the matter we're debating was to, was to do the inclusion of Rwandans in, this, um, uh, in, in, the, dy in the dynamics of and to investing mm. uh, in, in, in the dynamic dynamics of uh, access to you know, access to finance to mm. be you know to be part of the change the, the, the change that uh, Rwanda is uh, is experiencing my my answer to that is affirmative and I will tell you that uh, uh, if you if you you made an assessment of how many companies owned fully owned by Rwandans or partially owned by Rwandans and uh, foreign investor, investors mm. are, you know, are, are in a place, you, you, you would, uh, you, you would uh, definitely uh, uh, remove that perception that uh, foreigners are ripping off, ripping off the, you know, the... I mean, it's a slow process of trying to balance things because obviously foreigners it's have a lot well, of money. First of all, let, let me... Let me and they create let, jobs. Let me, let me not even exactly, yeah, that's the point I was going to, to get to. Let's not vilify the foreign investment as a we're not vilifying exactly as an approach to yeah. as, a, as an approach to excluding locals. You understand? Mm. Instead, let's see it as an enabler for uh, f for for productivity. That's a good point. An enabler for productivity, mm. and as you right. you just put it, it provides jobs. 
it contributes to uh, development, uh, infrastructure, all the infrastructure, rest of it. but also uh, tax, you know, taxes, okay, right. taxes, taxes to, to the country. That's that's a good and point. The, and governments, at least our government, very much so, uses those you know the like the, the revenue from from that pro production to develop to develop the, okay. you know, the, the we, we've got less than exactly. 30 seconds what can countries like nigeria learn from rwanda very briefly well i want to i want i, I want to go by just uh, you know saying nigeria learning from rwanda it's a you know we as africans there are some principles that we have to to, to stick to uh and one most important 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 is uh doing everything with keeping people at the center of okay. at the center that's, that, that's a good note yeah. to end on uh, ambassador stanislas kamanzi rwandan high commissioner to nigeria thank you very much indeed. thank you very it's much been brilliant for talking me. with yeah. you